Hey folks, Dr. Mike here with Renaissance Periodization, for Renaissance Periodization, and even by Renaissance Periodization. Why not? Simple tips for increasing your bench. You want them, I think, because you're watching this video, and boy, do we have them. As a matter of fact, I think we have seven of them. So what are they? These are super simple. There are more advanced questions that you can ask, which is why you'll hopefully be tuning in next week for our advanced periodization bench press improvement video. But Nonetheless, I will say this, if you haven't checked the boxes on all these seven simple tips, I wouldn't even move into the advanced stuff. You could watch that video to get our algorithm going, get me more Lambos, but at the end of the day, the simple stuff is something you just have to work through before you get to the advanced stuff, because first of all, it's simpler, it's easier to do, and also it has a huge ability to move your bench a ton, whereas the advanced stuff moves it by a smaller margin, but the advanced stuff only works best if you're already advanced and you really need it. Otherwise, the simple stuff works much better. Like, like if you have a standing army and they need to be able to fight, getting like each guy a gun is probably more important than like how advanced your best bomber is. Yes, that, you know, so kind of a simple situation there. So bench improvement tips on the simple end. Here we go. Number one is to standardize your good technique. And there's two problems potentially there. One, you don't know good technique. You don't know how to retract your shoulder blades and arch your back. If you need help on that, YouTube has like an infinity videos on bench press technique. Literally just find any two or three of them. All the points that these videos agree on, just write down on a fucking napkin and just do. And almost all of them are going to agree. They're going to lat tucking and elbow flare and all this other stuff. Fine. At least... Learn how to retract your shoulder blades, get your chest up, arch your back, and get proper position. So first, learn the right technique. And second of all, practice that good technique and make yourself technically mindful so that every repetition looks pretty much the same. Every set looks the same. Every week looks the same. And then after a while, you're just really good at executing that movement pattern. Because a lot of people miss benches as beginners because every rep and every lift look different. And sometimes they push their chest up. Sometimes they're uh, collapsed and their shoulders are forward. And they're like, why did I miss that bench? Well, motherfucker, you can't even diagnose the problem because your technique is different every time, right? If you drove to my house five different ways and each one of them was on average 40 minutes long, but like some of them were an hour and a half and some of them you got in at 20 minutes, you'd be like, what am I doing wrong? My first response would be like, you're taking a whole bunch of ways that are clearly not optimal. At least start taking one way and we can move that way to where it's better or worse and get you going, right? So same thing with bench, establishing good technique. I'll tell you guys this, before, if I if I watch you bench in real life, if I spot you or something, I'm at some gym across America or the world, you're like, Dr. Mike, can you spot me on a bench? Like if my butlers don't push you away from me and blow smoke in your face, then yes, the answer is yes, I spot you. If I watch you be inconsistent rep to rep or set to set on your technique and you ask me like, dude, like I'm trying to get my bench up, what can I do best? This is legit the shit I'll tell you. It's like real talk, one-on-one. Like before your technique is not good and standardized, I have nothing else to tell you except to practice your technique so that it's good and then standardized. But just to say it's good and you can consistently replicate that good technique. Next, simple tip is spend a lot of time in the three to six rep range. A bunch of people who want a bigger bench press do lots of one rep max tests with a bench dog because that's fun, high school one-on-one. And then they also do a lot of like flies and crossovers and bodybuilding work and high rep dumbbell presses. And they'll think, well, yeah, like this one gets my muscles bigger, but the rep max tests to find big muscles are making my bench stronger. Sure, that's the case. The problem is there's not much training of the nervous system going on, training into the heavy rep ranges with enough volume so that it really gets the message of learning how to push really hard. Because if you max test, it's more like showing off. It's not enough volume. It's not enough practice for you to train on. And your brain and spinal cord and all the peripheral nerves, they don't get so good at recruiting your muscles to do the high force for low reps thing. The way to get them to do that is lots of sets of three to six repetitions, like sets of five and shit like that. That's one of the reasons why starting strength for beginners works so fucking well. Motherfucker, you need lots of sets of fives and shit like that in order to practice lifting heavy weights for low enough reps to where you can still really practice your strength. That's how your strength goes up. It's not rocket science. Could you do lots of doubles and singles? Yeah, but then you'd have to do a crap load of them to get enough volume to really increase your strength. And if that volume... Lots of singles and injury risk is a little high. Your shoulders and elbows and stuff might start to give you trouble. Sets of three to six is that awesome way to build what's called basic strength in sports science. And a lot of people just don't spend a lot of time in that range 
because it's neither the fun part of showing off your bench nor the fun part of getting big pumps. It's right in the middle. It's kind of boring. It's kind of painful. It kind of grinds you. But holy fucking shit, what made you strong? So if your one rep max hasn't moved up in a while, regress back. No more one rep maxes. And for a while, no more high reps, sets of 20 on flies, just lots of sets of three to six in the compound basics, especially bench press. Holy fucking shit, you're going to get strong. And to that point, number three recommendation is to press more often, right? Remember Dan Green had an article uh, that shook the sort of powerlifting world back like maybe, oh, eight or 10 years ago, and it was called bench more to bench more. And it's a play on words, but it was like bench press more often to be able to bench press more weight. Uh, bench more to bench more, if it was both on weight, it's kind of a, not really a point in of itself, right? So ph- phenomenal article and phenomenal core concept there that many people have rediscovered since then for all the other lifts. The reason that was forgotten at the time was because equipped lifting was pr- the dominant modality people did, you know, squat suits and bench shirts. And in a bench shirt, you, you can't do competition benching all the time because it'll beat you straight to shit. It'll rip your shirt into pieces. You'll need a new shirt every three weeks because it'll just fuck it up. This is not something you do. But people came from the equipped side and started to train raw, and they did all this assistance work and all this other stuff and think their bench was going to go up, and it didn't go up much. But it turned out specificity is king, and for raw benching, you can actually bench press sets of five and sets of whatever that you need, and you can do it multiple times a week without your shoulders and your elbows killing you. Equipped, too heavy, too insane, can't do. Raw, can do. And so, instead of pressing one time a week, try pressing maybe twice a week. If you're already pressing twice a week, try pressing, whether it be benching itself uh, or just any kind of compound presses on machines, dumbbells, bench, incline, et cetera. More compound heavy pressing makes you a better compound heavy presser. And if lots of that is bench press itself, in many cases, you're just going to get better at benching. You practice what you uh, want to get good at and you get good at it. It's shocker, right? Specificity principle. What I don't want you guys to do is like bench one time a week. And they'd be confused as to why your bench isn't going up. Typically, if you do anything once a week in sports science, we consider you maintaining that as a maintenance program. So don't do that. Bench two or three times a week and your bench will probably go up. Now, of course, you don't just take your one time a week workout and multiply it. You have to reduce the volumes to account for the fact that you should be recovered for every one of these workouts. So if you get utterly sore from eight sets of pressing, but you need to be healed in in a day and a half, do like four sets of pressing. You'll get a great high-quality heavy workout, and the next time you go, you do another four sets of pressing, amazing high-quality workout, a little stronger, a little stronger, a little stronger. Next is doing the right accessories. You can do wobble board shit. You can do lockout work shit, but that's all stuff from equipped lifting that either was stupid back then and shouldn't be done back then or is good for equipped lifting, not great for raw lifting. So the best kinds of accessories tend to be deep dumbbell flies, wide grip presses, close grip presses, jam presses, skull crushers, things that break down the various components of the bench press movement, being the high pec involvement down here and the high tricep involvement here, and train those in their own way with their own limiting factors. If you manage to get ultra strong triceps from doing skull crushers or ultra big triceps doing skull crushers, get them ultra strong doing heavy jam presses and heavy close grip benches, If your triceps are a limiting factor, once you go back to your competition bench press where it's off the chest, your lockouts are going to be like they never were, and you're going to bench more, plain and simple. And the opposite is the case for chest, which brings me to my next point. Point number five, strengthen your chest. Yes, strengthen your triceps will make you bench more. But TBH, in the raw bench press, the chest tends to be the biggest limiting factor. In my experience as a coach, as a person who watches powerlifting meets from the corner, usually in a trench coat, not always. Am I wearing an, anything under that trench coat? No, it would be too hot. So of course I'm not wearing anything. In any case, how was I talking about? Chest for the bench press, raw, is in many ways like quads are to raw squatting. In equipment, it's different. But in raw squatting, quads are it. They're like 70% of the relationship between how much you squat and what size and strength your various muscles are. If you got big, strong fucking quads, bro, with some simple fixes and just getting a decent posterior chain, you're a big squatter. Whereas on the other hand, if you have a gnarly, strong posterior chain, but little tiny quads, raw squatting is going to be fucking hard. In the same way, you can have amazing, super strong triceps. You will be able to bench a lot. But nothing drives big benches like big pecs. 
And if you guys have ever seen the top raw bench pressers, physiques, they're like fucking insane. Like uh, Daniel Zaiman, I think is his name. He's from Iran. He's benched over 700, uh, 700 a few times raw. I don't understand how he like walks around or sleeps because his pecs like right here. RIP Nick Winters from back in the day, benched over 700 raw. I, didn't, I saw him in real life. I didn't think he was a real person. It didn't make sense to me how someone's upper pec could like come out like six inches this way and then drop down. It was nonsense, right? You'll see lots of articles. Triceps are the key to benching. They're all outdated. They're all old. They're all from the equipped days. The way to get a bigger raw bench on average for the average person is to prioritize both chest and triceps, but a lot of chest work. So deep dumbbell flies, right? There was a, I forget who his name was. Maybe it was Mike McDonald from back in the day. He was uh, pressing, uh, I think it was a really stupid shirt that didn't do anything. So more or less raw. I think he weighed like just over 200 pounds and he was pressing over 600 raw. Okay, so completely insane shit. And allegedly he could do the 100 pound dumbbells for deep, strict flies for sets of 10. You guys ever see someone do shit like that? What the fuck? I would walk into the gym and see that and be like, eh, that's my cue to leave. I'm never coming back to the gym. This is clearly a place for people not like me. It is a place for gods, right? And I'm just a lowly sports scientist on my best days. Try be like that. Be like Mike. You just like get big ass pecs and then benching kind of takes care of itself. All right, so that's a huge recommendation. Deep dumbbell flies, wide grip bench work with a pause. If you can get your hands on a camber bar, oh, fucking beautiful. All right, all these things work or didn't, let's say they worked, but you can be in a position, and this is point number six, where your body is just stale on benching. You've been benching three times a week for months and months and months. Your body just can't handle it anymore. It's overreached specifically on the bench press as a lift. That happens, right? Your stimulus to fatigue ratio from bench is down here, but you're doing it all the time. Get away from benching. Make two or three mesocycles for yourself. We say, I'm going to gain muscle for the bench, but it's going to be through everything but the bench press. Do some incline dumbbell stuff, do some machine presses, do some skull crushers, do some flies, et cetera. Still hitting those muscles, chest, triceps, front delts, et cetera. But no benching. When you come back to benching a few months later, it's going to feel alien and fucking weird, but you're going to be refreshed like crazy. And then when you reassert your technique, you might be able to actually improve your technique because you learn old shitty habits that stay with you. And if you do something all the time, you just keep doing it shitty. But if you get away from it and you sort of forget a little bit, when you come back, you can start doing it right again for the first time. Again, for the first time. Um, a music CD by Dr. Mike. Do, do you guys think I should release a, a musical album? Scott's a sound engineer by training. So we could get it popping. It could be rap, R&B, country. I do a little country. So in any case, that aside, let me know in the comments if what you want. Well? Uh, rap rock slash, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Bubba Sparks. <laughs> I'm the new Bubba Sparks. I didn't want to just throw that to you guys, but it's true. So we'll get some, some of that all mixed together for you. If you come back to benching after having been away for a while, your bench max will be down. Don't fucking test your max. Don't do it. Go back to sets of five to 10. And then your technique will feel better. And all of a sudden, after a few weeks, you'll be hitting the biggest sets of five to 10 you've ever hit because you have new big muscles and your bench is so refreshed. It's just grooving. Then you go to sets of three to six, crushing all-time PRs, try testing your max after that, voila, bigger max, right? So sometimes getting away from the thing actually helps you with the thing. Last one is gain weight, okay? Daniel Zaiman or whatever from Iran, there's not like a real big mystery as to how he benches 700, I mean, it's really impressive, but he weighs like fucking 700. He doesn't really, but he's like 300 something. It's fucking enormous. And if you ultimately want a bigger bench, gain weight. And while you gain weight, train the shit out of your chest, shoulders, and triceps. Specific to benching is even better, right? Lots of sets of five to 10 compound presses and, and tricep moves and flies as you gain weight. Once you get to whatever weight you want to be or after you burn the fat off, start doing lots of sets of three to six and then peak with sets of one to, th one to three and then voila, you have a bigger bench because your pecs and shoulders and triceps are bigger. If you want to stay in a certain weight class or if you don't want to get any bigger, that's not an option for you, but most of the other ones are. But if you just want a bigger bench and someone's like, hey, like you'll have to be more muscular, you're like, wow, shit, that's like two good things. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Comments below. Like, subscribe, buy stuff. And... uh yeah, the last thing I'll say is if you're really having trouble with some of your lifts, 
come and join us on Teamful Rom. Just go on Instagram or just go on the internet, type Teamful Rom, and a buy link will show up. And we have a Facebook group in which you can post as many videos as you like, and people critique your technique. And you can post your programs, and people critique those too and get you better programs. And you get a bunch of free stuff, it's all included, and weekly lives with myself and Charlie and Jared. That's all good stuff. But if you're really struggling with a lift or a bunch of lifts, come to Team Full Rom, help us out, and um, or we'll help you out, rather, and you can help us out with the Lamborghini money. But uh, outside of that, folks, best of luck, and we'll see you next week for the advanced version of this, which doesn't mean it's the better version. It's just for people that have already done all these. So within the next week, we're starting the timer now, go do all these basics, come back in a week, you'll be advanced. See you next time.